Good evening and welcome to Open Your Mind Radio. You have myself, Alan James. And myself, Stephen George. Good evening. Good evening. It's Sunday, the 10th of March, 2019. And as you can probably guess, we are using a different laptop and different software tonight because the problem that people, we've how had... How people guess? Well, by the, by the way, the actual jingle finished very quickly Oh, there. yeah, it just chops off at the end. It chops off at the end. You'll have to... It'll all come out in the end. Anyway, anyway, good evening. Our guest on the show is a chap called Jordan Maxwell, and Jordan has been around for a very long time, and he's been researching the whole cabal, New World Order, Deep State for years and years and years, and even though we've been on the on the have a radio show for nearly nine years uh, and known about Jordan, we've uh, we've never had him on the show. So it's it's great to have him on tonight and have a talk with him. We'll be bringing Jordan in in a few minutes. But as usual, we're going to talk about a few bits and we're going to find out what the communication channels are. Okay, folks, communication channels. The communication channels are email info at oymireland.com by phone 046 927 and you can also contact us direct through the OYM chat room. Okay, yeah, the OYM chat room can be found on the website which is OYM Radio. Dot com and you will see the link there for the chat room. If you do have a username and password, you can log straight in and join the festivities over there with a great bunch of people who are there every week. And uh, you won't be—you'll uh, be in good company. You won't be disappointed. A lot of uh, decent folks on there. We also monitor the chat room on peoplesinternetradio.com as well, and an equally uh, nice bunch of people in over there as well. So if you, no, no matter what chat room you decide to log into, you'll be in good company. Um, our own our own chat room, as I said, if you do have a username and password, then you can log straight in. If you don't, you will need to request the username and password uh, b- at least 24 hours before the beginning of the show will be preferable because we don't entertain requests just before we go live. It's just too much uh, too much of a, a, a bother. Um, on the website as well, you will see the link for the YouTube channel, for the email, for Skype, for the anti-social media, Facebook, also Twitter and MeWe. And the email address is info at oymradio.com. And we do welcome emails during the week and uh, during the show as well. Uh, just let us know, you know what your thoughts are on our guest, if you have any questions or if you just want to say hi. We do appreciate those emails. Uh, the phone number, if you want to ring in, uh, is 046-927-1212. And from outside the Republic of Ireland, it's 00 359 one, two. You will also see on the website there we have a link to Patreon and uh, a big hi to everyone who is joining us uh, who, is, who has registered uh, for Patreon as well. We're on there. If you fancy joining us, you can log in, follow the link and uh, hit us up on Patreon and uh, you, will kind of re- you will receive uh, a lot of the kind of uh, blogs that we do from time to time, Alan more so than I, but we do have some blogs going up there just to keep people uh, in the loop and what's going on. I think that's it. Brilliant stuff. Right, you're going to kick us off, Steve? I am going to kick us off. We have some news in from healthnutnews.com, and it says 126 lots of popular popular blood pressure medication has been recalled for cancer risk. And it says, if you take blood pressure medication or love someone who does, please pay attention. It was announced by the FDA this week that three drug companies recalled 126 lots of the blood pressure drugs Losartan and Valsartan after it was discovered that they contained trace amounts of probable carcinogens. The drugs are part of a class of drugs called anti... uh, anti, I should have practiced this one. Antiogenism. uh, Two receptor blockers, ARBS and Orobindopharma recalled 38 lots of Valstran and Valstran combined with Almopidine 40 milligrams, 80 milligrams, 160 milligrams, and 320 milligram tablets that were distributed to pharmacies under the names Orobido Pharma USA and Acetrus Health LLC. Uh, Camber Pharmaceuticals Inc. on Thursday recalled 87 lots of Losartan that contained small amounts of uh, ingredients uh, that were distributed nationally uh, to retail, retail, retail 
and mail order pharmacies, wholesalers and distributors. Uh, Macloads Pharmaceuticals Limited recalled a single lot also on February the 22nd and the meds are packaged, it says, in, in 30 count, 90, 500 and 1,000 count bottles. I do apologise for some of the big words that I could not pronounce, but because I'm not a doctor or medically trained, I do stumble with those kind of words. That's okay. Well, look, the whole idea of that article is just about the cancer risk and certain medications. Um, and more and more, we are coming across uh, issues with uh, the medical profession and the tablets being issued and the side effects of the tablets. So just for your own safety, if you are on medication, uh, regardless of what they are, just ask for the pill, which is the public information leaflet, that should come with all tablets to tell you what the side effects are and then decide for yourself whether that you want to take them or not or get an alternative or find a, a natural solution. Um, because we're hearing more and more uh, really sad stories and bad stories of people with side effects on medication. Well, I'll just say very quickly, my daughter was, uh, was at a doctor recently and she was prescribed some medication and we we just kind of we actually got the pill we went through the the, the the leaflet and some of the side effects you know it says one in one in a hundred one in a thousand one in ten thousand and it gave all the different side effects and some of the side effects were worse than the condition that it was actually treating uh, so we kind of made a family conscious decision that you know she wasn't going to we're going to look at different uh, alternatives and in relation to the likes of blood pressure lowering medication uh, there are a lot of um alternatives out there. I believe from what we discussed recently, ginger. Uh, ginger is quite good and um, there's a, a lot of other naturals and a quick visit to any health food shop and you will be bombarded with the amount of information that the, that the, the people behind the counter there actually know. They're very helpful and uh, you know it, it's, it's definitely worth going in and just, uh, just asking the question. Excellent. Right, okay. Now, we got, we did receive a disturbing phone call from Barry Trower during the week. Uh, Barry is a highly respected scientist and an expert in microwave radiation. And this is why he rang us. Uh, Barry was interviewed on General Authority's show during the week. And Barry wanted to give out the OAM website address. As he, we have a page for Barry on our website with Barry's documents on it. And he wanted people to be able to access. Now, um, he gives out this air address globally. And all, and he says it to us. Look, when I go to America or I go to Europe or whatever, and I get interviewed, I give out your address and your documents are on it, uh, which is great. Now, apparently um, Barry was going to do that, but Gemma stopped Barry from giving out her website address because she didn't know who we were, who 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 OIM were. Uh, so it wasn't good enough that Barry knew us. She also had to know us. Um, so basically she was questioning Barry's integrity um, and stopping him from giving out the address because she didn't know us. Um, and I find that quite insulting for Barry. Um, I really do. Now, it was disrespectful. Everybody knows Barry's been on our show a number of occasions. He's a gentleman and a really nice guy. And, you know, he's an expert in his field. And he's a good friend of OEMs. And Barry doesn't associate with negative people or people that would affect what he's doing and we have a good friendship with Barry um, so you know well done Gemma for insulting Barry's integrity um, it's it's just not the thing to do you know I think in over nine years of uh, nine years coming up to nine years of OEM doing interviews with guests we've never turned around to a guest and said no you can't give out a link because we trust their integrity we don't question it um, and they we trust that they know what they're doing um, so it's it's just, you know, I don't know why. Is it because she doesn't know I am or is she afraid of that if people hear about OIM that she's afraid that numbers will be taken off her show for people tuning in to us? I don't know. I don't know. It's it's just I just find that disrespectful. And Barry rang us straight after the show that he did with Gemma and said, I'm sorry lads, but I tried to give out the link but Gemma wouldn't let me do it. Nice Gemma. Nice. Um how's your week? My week's been fine. Uh, I, I'm quite busy, thanks to Brexit, but we're not here to talk about Brexit, and I'm not going to talk about it. It's ruining my life, <laughs> uh, because we're so so busy in the warehouse. I didn't mention it last week, so I'm not going to go in, into it again. Um, just a couple of things on my little slip of paper that I hold in my hand. Uh, yeah, have you ever seen those ads on TV where it says, you, you, should, you should change your mattress every eight years? Yeah. 
that I, I used to look at them going, yeah, that's a sales tactic, it's a sales ploy. It's not. It's genuine. It's real. Change your mattress every eight yeah. years or even sooner if you can because both my wife and I have been suffering from back pain for quite a long time. Uh, you know, when you're getting out of bed in the morning and it's a struggle to get out of bed. So we kept saying we're going to get a new mattress. We're going to change the mattress. We must change the mattress. Oh, God, someday <laughs> soon we're going to change the mattress. Well, anyway, uh, she found a link uh, through social media or anti-social media, as I call it, Facebook, to a guy in Mullingar. And uh, I just, I just had, it's worth mentioning because I was floored by this. Uh, she rang up the, the guy, so I got the phone number on Facebook. Um, it was Leams Furniture, was the name of the business, in Mullingar County, Westmead. And she just said, you do mattresses, yes. Uh, I'm looking for a double bed mattress, four foot six. He said, yeah, that's no problem. Just let me check that I have one in stock. I'll ring you back. Within 10 minutes, he rang her back, and she says, okay, um, when, like, obviously we need to get it. When, when can I get that? And he says, it's in the van, it's on the way. Wow. G- give us your address. And it's, it, was, it was cash on delivery. Fantastic. And the guy was there from, from, from a, the, the first phone call to going up and putting the mattress on the bed, one hour, 60 minutes. And I, I just couldn't believe it. And that was on a Saturday. Fantastic. Yeah. So I just thought give a mention. What's the mattress make, was it? It wasn't Mattress Mick. No, it was Liam. Mattress Liam. <laughs> mattress <laughs> Liam. <laughs> anyway, yeah, something uh, when, when I came up to see him, Alan said to me that there was a significant reduction in the amount of chemtrails that he has seen during the week uh, out these parts. Uh, I've kind of figured out why, because they were all in Dublin. Uh, I've seen loads of them during the week. Uh, I didn't see any craft flying behind them, um, you know, did, did doing anything to, to what was coming out of the back of the planes. Um, but look, they're still happening. And as we said before, until we until we can look up and see a nice blue sky without chemtrails, uh, then we, we you know maybe if, if that happens, then we kind of think that maybe we are winning this war. Anyway, this this is something else uh, that I noticed during the week, and you know the way we offer with different technology, yeah. we always talk about technology. Um, I have a small cloud server. Okay. Sorry to hear that. <laughs> it's not painful, <laughs> and there are creams that you can rub in. Yeah. Um, but you know, on these on the cloud folder, you know the one I have. Mm. Uh, there's a folder on it called public, right? right? So the public folder is obviously open to the public, and you cannot delete this public folder. And what concerned me was I was just doing a little bit of housekeeping, but it tidying you know, up, and I went into this public folder, and there was a folder that I had in there for a chap that I know whose name is Willie. And Willie uh, was sending me uh, pictures. They were of a, a local event, and then we were kind of turning it from in, into a slideshow, mm. and that was fine. So after Willie had finished sending me the pictures, I I didn't delete the folder, but I deleted the contents because I no longer required, the, you know, didn't need them. And doing a bit of housekeeping today, I said I won't be getting any more pictures. I'll delete the folder, and it said, "Do you want to delete the picture inside?" And I said, "There's no pictures inside." So I opened the folder, and I went in, and it just said, uh, "Willie self." Uh, self image so I went okay I wonder why you sent me that but it obviously wasn't him because it was a yeah. public folder someone else had accessed it and it was a picture of well it was a picture of a willy right okay <laughs> yeah someone with their member exposed uh, and I was quite concerned about that because like I say it's a public folder yeah and I, I tried to going into the software there seems to be no way to actually delete that folder yeah but can you not switch it off from being public no and make it nope private? nope Oh, okay. yeah, that's a concern. That's a bit of a concern. That's, that is a concern. Anyway. And of course, should anybody in any way uh, want you to uh, to stitch you up or do something, you know? Yes. They go, oh, but it's your cloud server. You're in charge of that. And you're thinking, yeah. where the hell did that come from? Yeah. yeah. So Western Digital, if you're listening, we've got a problem. Mm. Anyway. Um, also noticed during the week that... Um, I, I've, I, I don't know if it's maybe a change in whatever's going on. I know we talk about uh, downloads and all this sort of stuff. I've had some ringing in the air three or four times during the week, but I've also noticed my mood. Uh, I haven't been kind of oh, in, a, in a happy mood or I haven't been in a sad mood. I've just been kind of like on an even keel during the week. You know, kind of the, this uh, similar kind of way as if you were on, say, uh, antidepressants where you, there's no highs and there's no lows. And 45, 55? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, okay. not kind of sure if, if it's just me feeling that or if anyone else. Um, but the fact that I had some download or re- ringing in the ears, mm. and you know, we, we kind of suspect that maybe I am getting the download. Maybe it's all about the change. I don't know. Uh, and I just want to give a shout out as well to Net One. 
you were praising that one a couple of weeks back because yeah. you were very helpful in the city when you, you that's our, our broadband provider and uh, they helped me out immensely during the week as well i had a couple of issues and the lads over there absolutely no questions no matter what time i got onto them they sorted out the problems and were only too happy to help so a big shout out to them so if you're looking for a broadband uh, provider do check out net one and the last thing on the list, Permanent TSB were on to me during the week. They sent in a letter. Uh, they're changing all the details to, to accounts and, and, and whatnot. Um, and there is a, an €18 Euro quarterly fee that is obviously taken out of your account and you agree to pay it and there's nothing you can do. Um, but they said they sent me out a letter to say, if I can keep a minimum of two and a half grand in my account, then they'll, they'll waive that quarterly fee. Mm. So after I finished laughing, uh, that was that was it. You know, I mean, two and a half grand. Yeah, Who has yeah. two and a half? Bank of Ireland did the same thing. Really? Yeah. 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 Anyway, there we go. That's my week in a nutshell. How was your week? Brilliant. Okay. Well, before we bring uh, Jordan in, just a few minutes um, on uh, my week. Um, just an announcement. You know, we, we talked about um, and that we made the announcement last week about the sabbatical that we're going to be taking at the end of March. Uh, we've both been feeling the low energies and uh, maybe just time for a break and a bit of a change um, because we've been doing OAM for nearly nine years. So it's like, as I say, bands taking time off and doing their own solo projects um, just to do something different. Uh, now, in the past, when we have said this, something happens and we get a boost and we're off again for another period of time. If the energy stays the same, it just might be the universe agreeing that we need to take a break. But we'll see what happens with the energy anyway. Um, Steve is currently uh, doing his own radio show with his wife on Thursday night. Um, PAR call to his company. It will be. Uh, I'll be doing my own radio project, um, and also OIM will not be broadcasting. And um, the time slot will be available from seven to nine GMT. So I'll be doing my new radio show project at the same time on OIM on Sunday night. And um, now I'm still sorting out the details, but it'll be based on solutions and a different way of thinking. I'll be aiming to move from the 3D to the 5D if that's possible. Um, and I should have more information uh, on the project next Sunday because it's all kind of, I'm um, thinking about it and working on it and changing and chopping and all that kind of stuff. Um, but um, Steve's up and running with his show. Steve's been running his show now for the last few weeks. Do you want to give out the web address there, Steve? Um, yeah, if anyone's interested, the web address for what what I'm doing on a Thursday with my wife, my beloved, is uh, Two's Company, T-W-O-S, Two's Company dot E-U. Uh, that will bring you to a small, very small website. Um, what we're, we're just kind of sitting down and having a chat. Uh, it's just kind of talking about well, what's in the news, and it's very kind of laid back and very informal. It's, it's not kind of hard-hitting journalism or anything like it. Uh, so we're going to be doing that, yeah. Well, we, we, we're already doing it on Thursdays. Uh, so yeah, if anyone wants to join us, um, we do. We we will be there, and we do monitor the chat room as we do on OAM, and we ask, we answer questions, and all that sort of stuff. And anyone is kind of welcome to to pop along. And Alan was just saying to me during the week that oh yeah, we are kind of uh, uh, broadcasting on PIR, but Alan was saying during the week uh, that maybe we could simulcast on OAM as well. So um, kind of oh, more more bases covered there. So. Again, that's going to be Thursday from 7.30 to 9.30 p.m. GMT. Brilliant stuff. Right, okay, let's bring our guest in, um, Jordan Maxwell. Steve has his bio, so Steve, take it away. Yeah, Jordan continues as a preeminent researcher, an independent scholar in the field of occult religious philosophy. His interest in these subjects began as far back as 1959. Uh, he served for three and a half years as a religion editor of Truth Seeker magazine, that's America's oldest free thought journal since 1873. His work exploring the hidden foundations of Western religion and secret societies creates enthusiastic response from audiences around the world. He has conducted dozens of intense seminars, hosted his own radio talk shows, guested on more than 600 radio shows, and written, produced, and appeared in numerous television shows and documentaries, including three two-hour specials for the CBS TV network, uh, as well as the internationally acclaimed five-part ancient mystery series, all devoted to understanding ancient religious and their per pervasive influence on world affairs today. 
His work on the subject of secret societies, both ancient and modern, and their symbols has fascinated audiences around the world for decades. Considering the, considering the rapidly moving events of today and the very real part hidden religious agendas play in our modern war-torn world, he feels these controversial subjects are not only interesting to explore but too important to ignore. His extraordinary pre- presentations include documents and photographs seldom seen elsewhere. Uh, Jordan's areas of inter- interest include astrotheology, sexual symbolism in world religions, foundations of modern day religion, secret societies and toxic religion, world mysteries, ancient and modern, ancient symbols and occult, occult emblems, ancient sciences and technology, hidden Bible teachings and mysteries, the sun in the history of politics and religion, the story your church doesn't want you to know, and secret societies and their influence on world events. Fantastic. Loads to talk about. Good evening, Jordan. How are you doing? Well, thank you for having me. Good evening. Good evening. Or good morning, <laughs> depending on where you are. Exactly. Good morning in your time zone. Good evening in our time yeah. zone. Um, Jordan, before we get into uh, any subject matter, we always ask our guests who come on to tell us about their awakening. Now, we know that you've been doing this for a very long time, and you're highly respected in the old media, but tell us when you woke up when did you realize something was going on how long ago was that and what was the trigger well i actually i think i would go back to 1959 when i first became aware of the dark side of the world i i came to california originally i was from florida And at 19 years old, I left home and ended up in Los Angeles on the other side of the country at 19 years old. And I happened by chance to meet a young lady, and I was 19, she was about 17. And I met her in a restaurant. I was sitting next to her at the counter, and we began talking, and, uh, and I liked her, she liked me, so we got together and we started uh, meeting each other. We would meet on Saturdays at the restaurant because I only lived about two blocks from the downtown uh, street and she only lived about three blocks and she lived on the same street I did. And so it just worked out that every Saturday I would see her at the restaurant and we'd spend some time walking around the streets going to movies or whatever and uh so we became very close friends and one day she one evening it was on a friday night she came to my place i didn't know where she lived she knew where i lived because i was the closest uh you know i only lived two blocks from town and she lived three and so i never went home i never went to her house but she knew where i was And so one night she came to my place and she said, my dad wants to talk to you. And I, of course, said, I'm not interested to talk to your dad. I got nothing to say to him. And she said, no, my father is very impressive. He's very important. And he wants to talk to you. He's got something to tell you. I thought that was interesting because I don't know who he is. Why would he want to talk to me? So I went with her. And when I met him, I, I, I knew instinctively that there was something different about this man I had never seen before. I, I knew there was something about him that just didn't set well with me. I could feel it. I could just feel something when I met him. And, but I didn't say anything. And so we went in the house, and my girlfriend and her sister was about 10 years old. <clears throat> they sat on the floor, and the father and I sat on the sofa. He sat on one end, I sat on the other. And he was just talking. We were just making discussion about you know, what am I doing and how am I liking Los Angeles and how long have I been here, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And so we're just talking, and I was feeling a little bit better about him. But I still felt there was something strange about this man. 
But uh, but since we were talking about normal things, I felt a little better about him. And then he said to me, he said, remember when you were back in Florida and your dad built a new back porch? Remember when your dad built that new back porch? And that scared me because I didn't want to show tears in front of my girlfriend. But it really frightened me. I don't know how he knew that. How did he know I was from Florida and what my dad did? <clears throat> and he said, well, did he do that or didn't he? I said, yes, he did. And he said, well, remember he built the back porch with green lumber and it smelled funny? And I thought, yes, I remember that. And then he told me, he, he, he said to me, and one night you were supposed to be in bed. You were about eight years old and you were supposed to be in bed, but you got out of bed and you went out on the back porch. You remember that? And, and I did remember it. And I didn't say anything. And he said, and the full moon was out and you could, you were sitting on the back porch and you were looking at the full moon. Do you remember that? And I said, yes. And he said, and you, what did you do? What did you do? And I didn't say anything. He said, I'll tell you what you did. You talked to God, didn't you? And I, I motioned my head, yes, I did. And he said, and what did you say to God? You were only eight years old, sitting on the porch by yourself at night. What did you say to God? And, and I didn't say anything. He said, well, I'll tell you what you said. You ask God to allow you to do something important with your life. You didn't want to be here just because you were born. You wanted to do something important with your life. Is that what you asked God? Is that what you said? And I said, yes, that's what I said. And he said, well, how would I know all of that? How do I know that? And I said, I don't know how you know. He said, well, I know because we were there. We were right there listening to you. And I said, I didn't see anybody. He said, of course you didn't see us. We don't want you to see us. But we were there because how do I know all these things if I wasn't there? And I said, I, I don't know. And he said, well, we were there. We heard you. <clears throat> and he said, you have always been interested, as long as we can remember, you have always been interested in UFOs and aliens and other world experiences and strange things, haven't you? And I said, yes, I have. And he said, well, would you like to see some UFOs up close tonight? And I said, yes, I would. He said, well, I can do that for you. That much I can do. So come with me now. And I got up with him, and we went outside. The two girls got up, and they followed us. The four of us were out in his front yard back in 1959, which was exactly 59 years ago. And we stood out in the front yard, and it was about 11 o'clock at night, and he looks up into the sky, and, he's, and he starts talking inaudibly. You can't hear him, but he, he's obviously talking to someone. <clears throat> and his mouth is moving, so we know he's talking to somebody. And he said, they said they'll be here in about two minutes. And I said, who? And he said, well, you said you wanted to see UFOs up close. Yes. Well, then give them about two minutes and they'll be here. And I thought to myself, how do you know that? And he said, just wait, you'll see. And sure enough, about two minutes later, three glowing discs showed up. We saw them coming over the mountains, coming into the valley where I lived. <coughs> Excuse me. And <coughs> three discs showed up. They were flying in a triangle formation, and they were glowing different colors. It was an extraordinary experience. And, <clears throat> and they flew over us. They came very slowly, and they come over the top of us, and they stopped. And they sat there, and they were about the size of a full moon. Each one of them was a full moon size. Not a little light in the sky, but full moon size. And they were beautiful. They were glowing different colors, making no sound whatsoever. <clears throat> and I was staring at them, and we were all staring at them. 
And I looked at him, the father, and he and he's and he said they're beautiful, aren't they? And I said they're gorgeous. Who are they? And he said that's us. And I said who is us? Who are you talking about? He said we've been watching you for a long time. We brought you. And he asked me. He said why did you come to California? And I said I don't know. I just had to. He said, that's right, I brought you here. You said you wanted to do something for God, so we're going to let you do something for God. You said you wanted to do something important, we're going to give you something important to do. But you have to come here to be trained, so we are going to start you on your journey tonight. I'm going to start you on where you're going to go and what you're going to do. And I had no idea in the world what he was talking about, but he did speak to the sky, and the UFO showed up. So that was impressive to me, enough to listen to him. <clears throat> and so he gave me a book, and he said, I want you to read this book, and it will start you on your journey. And then he, and he looked up in the sky and started talking to those vehicles and started talking to them, the craft again, and he said, they said they're going to go now. They will see you later, but they're leaving now, and they did, and they began to slowly move, move northward until they were finally out of sight, <clears throat> and I was amazed uh, about you know, just talking to the sky and these UFOs show up. And he knew all about my family. He knew all about me and what I had done. And uh, and so he said, so we have something for you to do. You did ask God to let you do something, so we're going to let you do something. And he said, but what you're going to do for us, you're not going to do to the very last part of your life. So don't worry about it. <clears throat> Just know that we'll be there to guide you. And we will decide who you will meet and who you will, what you will find out, what you will learn. And we will make sure that you know what you're supposed to know by the time we have for you to do what we have for you to do. And he says, so, and, and so I ask him, well, what is it I'm supposed to do? He said, don't worry about that. It's not important right now. It's going to be at the very last part of your life. You'll be very old. It'll be the last part of your life. We have something for you to do. And when that time comes, you will know what it is that we want you to do. <clears throat> so, as it turns out, I left. I took the book with me. <clears throat> the book was called The Complete Works of Charles Fort, F-O-R-T. Charles Fort, The Complete Works of Charles Fort is an extraordinary book. You really need to find it. You really need to get it. It's still available today, and I think it may be available on on the web <clears throat> for a free download. But nonetheless, get the book. It's a fascinating book about strange things which have happened on the earth that no one has ever figured out why. <clears throat> and that's the strange thing. That's the strangest thing you will find are all the interesting things which have happened in the world that nobody has an ex nobody knows why. And so that started me on my journey, reading about strange events which have happened in the world and which nobody knows why. And nobody has ever offered an explanation for. Okay, that's, that's interesting. Who was the person? <coughs> Who was that man? I, I don't, I've given his name out before, but I don't think I want to give his name out any longer. I've done it on other radio shows. I've given his name. <coughs> but then one day I went, I used to go over to the house on weekends, I, it was only a block away, and I used to go to his house on weekends to go in and hang out with my girlfriend, and we would, and my girlfriend and and I would go with him and the wife, and we'd go the, as a family. We'd take off and go, you know, go somewhere, and he would tell me all about the extraterrestrial people who are on this earth and where they've come from, and we'd go out to the desert, and he would tell me all about the ancient and prehistoric history of the world, who these extraterrestrials were, 
and where they've come from. And <clears throat> he never said he was one, but I knew there was something about him. I didn't do it from the moment I met him. And so I totally believe he was not from this world. And so one morning I went over to the house on the weekend to see them, and they were gone, totally gone. They had moved, and the house was wide open. The doors and windows were wide open. There was nothing in the house. They were gone. And I was very, very disappointed because even my girlfriend didn't tell me she was leaving. She, they just left, and that was it. They were gone. And I've never seen them ever. I never saw them ever again. <clears throat> and so I am sure that what happened was that he was supposed to, and I was supposed to meet him, and he was supposed to get me started, but, which he did. He really did get my attention. And he was supposed to get me started, and then he moves on. That was what he was here for, just to see me. And then he moved on after he's met me. And so I just understand that that's probably what happened, is he was supposed to meet me and get me started, and then he moved on and go somewhere else. And so that's what happened. And that got me started wondering about all the strangest things which have happened in the world that nobody has any explanation for. No one knows why. Nobody knows how. It just happened. Okay. <clears throat> but, but that started me on my journey, and I've been running ever since. Well, that's a very, very interesting experience. <clears throat> I know we could go through the history of what happened, but... That would take a show probably four or five hours. What I'd like to do is get your thoughts on what's happening today with everything that's going on in the world with the cabal, with the deep state, and, and what's been happening over the last... You know, the, the big catalyst for an awful lot of people was 9-11. That, that woke a lot of people up. And at the moment, you know, there are a lot of people waking up. As we said just before we went live, that even in the nine years we've been running the radio show... A lot of people have woken up in that time, or at least are beginning to ask questions. There are still people who aren't woken up, and maybe it's not their time. But what's your take on what's happening now, especially you're living in America, with Trump, Hillary, the deep state, uh, the Dems, the Republicans, and global issues that are going on? What do you think? And maybe we'll talk about disclosure, or what's believe people are waiting on disclosure. Um, we think that it's already happened, um, just because Trump or Putin hasn't come out on TV and said it doesn't mean it hasn't been uh, uh, dis disclosed, the information hasn't been disclosed. disclosed. Mm -hmm. I know the BBC mentioned that, I think the FBI, the CIA have li uh, released um, uh, a plethora of information, um, of uh, information <laughs> regarding UFO sightings and everything else, but what's your take on, on, on what's happening today? I am sure that this government is highly connected to the extraterrestrial presence. <clears throat> there is no doubt in my mind that there is an extraterrestrial presence, something, a life form that we do not understand and do not know anything about, we the people. But there are government agencies who have been looking into this subject <clears throat> for many, many years, and I'm sure that they have made contact with us, and we have been contacting them and talking with them. There's no doubt in my mind about it, because I've seen too much and I've heard too much, and I've had my own personal experiences. <clears throat> and so... Uh, I think that a lot of our really high technology was given to us by this extraterrestrial. That's what it seems to be happening. <clears throat> and I, I read so many books and heard so many different stories from astronauts, military people, <clears throat> very important uh, uh, industrialists, people I know, and they have told me that they're getting their information from the extraterrestrials, fiber optics, lasers, all kinds of high technology. So I know that we, we humans are being led <clears throat> in our destiny. We're being led to something. And I know because I've been led. And I don't have any problem with the idea of of meeting extraterrestrials and you know and being led through life by them. I don't have any problem with that. 
<clears throat> and the reason why is that I don't question it because in my in my spirit I feel very good about what I do. I don't feel there's any evil influence on me. It's not the devil, like <clears throat> so many Christians would say. <clears throat> Excuse me. Christians will tell me it's all the devil. Uh, you know, the demons are, are connecting themselves to you. I don't feel that because I am doing what I do because I want to help educate my fellow man. And I, have, I want to help people. I don't think the demons would do anything for me to help my fellow man. <clears throat> so I feel very good about what I do, and I don't have any problem with with following my spirit and doing what doing what I do. So that's why I don't question it. Okay, and obviously <coughs> you're not you're not ready to. Uh, you said that this man that you met has something. He said. Um, as you get older, something's going to happen. So obviously, um, that's something to. I'd like to think that some maybe something to look forward to, by the sound of it. Well, I, 80 years old is where I am now, and uh, I'm, I'm very close to 80, very soon. And uh, <clears throat> so, at 80 years old, I assume that that's when he met by the very last part of your life. And I don't have any problem with my mortality. I don't care. I don't have any problem with leaving this world because it's part of who I am as part of life. But I do feel very strongly that there's so much that I have learned. Uh, like he told me, my girlfriend's father told me, we will see to it that you meet who you're supposed to and learn what you're supposed to learn so that you can be of value to us and the last part of your life. Well, that's what's happened to me. I have somehow or another, I always try and say on all radio shows, I always say I am not the world's foremost authority on anything. Why? Because I have learned how much I don't know. So I don't consider myself to be a world-class authority, but I do consider that the one thing I do consider is important about what I do are the people that I have met in my life. I have met so many interesting and important people. Somehow or another, I meet them. I don't know how, but I end up in the company of extraordinarily powerful people. <clears throat> over the years and they have told me things in private and so after a while I've come to the point where I know that I'm meeting people for a reason and I'm collecting information for a reason and I know what the reason is I have to tell people what's going on I have to try and help those people who want to know what's going on I have to try and help them to hear and understand the things I've been given <clears throat> because I've been in the company of some very important people in this world that I'm not an, I'm not the expert but I know who the experts are and I've been in their company I've listened to them and I've learned from them and that's what I try and do now is I try and give to people the information I've been given and do it in such a way as I don't get myself in trouble or anybody else. <clears throat> okay, <clears throat> because so, you can so, get in trouble if you know too much. Okay, so is there any information that you have that you could uh, tell us that's of importance? Maybe something that's happening now or coming down the line that we need to know about? I think probably the most important thing is the religions that we believe in. I think that's where the real answer is. Because we as humans are hardwired, so to speak, about religion. So many people believe in things that they don't understand, they have no background to understand, and so they are misled into believing things which aren't true or which they're not interpreting correctly the words and the terms and the ideas that we use we don't understand and government and, and religion 
in our institutions, our education, our military, we humans use words that we don't understand. And I think that's the most important thing, is to find out where your ideas have come from. I like the idea of your show being called Open Your Mind, because your mind is like a parachute. It doesn't work if it's not open. <clears throat> and so I like the idea of helping people to wake up to what words mean, what the ideas mean, and where they came from, and how do we get to be who we are today. And where are we going? Where well, all you have to do is understand where you come from, where you are now, and draw a straight line out, and now you know where you're going. But most people don't know where they've come from. They don't understand the history of the world. And so they don't know where they've come from. They don't know what they're doing now. So how would they know where they're going? They don't. They just live each day, never realizing that you are on a on a ride to somewhere. You're going somewhere as a human being. You you are evolving into something every day. You're moving towards something. But most people have no idea where they're going or what they're doing or where they've been. And so that's what I try and do is explain to the people of this world, nothing in this world works the way you think it does. Nothing. Nothing in this world works the way you think it does. There's a bigger world, and it's far, far deeper and far, far darker than you know. Mm. Oh, yeah, we can definitely vouch for that. You know, with the years that you've been involved in this subject matter, I'm <laughs> sure you've come across the naysayers and the people who would call you a conspiracy theorist and everything. What, after years of doing this, what's your approach to them? What way do you t tackle them? I have come to the conclusion of uh, I've been doing what I do, talking to people uh, as far back as 1959, which is exactly 59 years ago. Almost 60 years ago, I started talking. As a 19-year-old boy, I started talking and giving lectures at uh, little small groups, like in a, in a uh, library. I would rent a library room for the day, and I would talk about the fact that I'm going to be speaking on a particular subject. And, uh, and so I would, uh, I've been talking to audiences for almost 60 years. Uh, but I have had so many people that don't want to hear what I'm talking about. So many people do not want. As a matter of fact, I will give you. Uh, I'll give you a secret about people that I have learned. It's a very deep secret most people will not understand. But I have discovered that people will always support financially and every other way they will support what they want they will not support what they don't want if you're going to buy clothes people will buy the clothes that they want to buy they will not buy clothes that they don't like people if they're going to go out to eat they will go to where they want to eat not go where they don't want to eat and they will pay and support businesses that they like. They will not go to movies that they don't like. So, therefore, the bottom line is <clears throat> people will always support what they want. They will not pay for and support what they don't want. And if history has taught us anything, it has taught us over thousands of years, most people don't want to hear the truth. It's like the movie where the young attorney asked the guy, understand, I want the truth. And he said, you can't handle the truth. That's what I have found. Most people don't want to hear the truth. They want to believe what they want to believe, and they will pay for it. They will, they will financially support what they, what they want. They will not financially support what they don't want to hear. And most people don't want to hear the truth. And so I understand that, but I feel I feel that I am not supposed to decide anything. I just do what I do, and whoever hears me, they're supposed to hear me. And if they don't hear me, they're not supposed to hear me. 
And so I don't care. I just do what I do, and if it's supposed to be heard, it will be, and if I'm not supposed to be heard, it won't. I don't care. I just do what I do and see where it goes because it's not really my work. I feel there's a spiritual presence in my work. Whatever I'm doing is to wake people up. And, of course, as you said, I have, began, I have been successful in being able to be heard, and I've been very successful in meeting important people. I've, I've sat in the company of astronauts, military people, uh, mafiosi, gangsters, politicians, teachers, authors, lecturers, writers, in Hollywood, I've sat with some of the most important people in Hollywood and hear what they're doing and see what the studios are doing. So I've been very fortunate to meet a lot of very important people and hear a lot of stories. And some of them were very scary, very frightening, and some of them were very incredibly interesting. So that's what I do. That's why I feel the importance of what I do, is i just trying to tell the people and share with the world the things which I have learned. I'm not an expert on anything, but I have had some very extremely important experiences. And the one, the one subject which I have always loved, even before I started speaking publicly about it, it was theology and religion. I've always been interested in about the, the story of God and who is God, where is God, what are you talking about? When you talk about God, I learned a long time ago, you need to explain your your ideas. You need to clarify your ideas. When you use a word, maybe other people understand that word, but they understand it a different way. So you need to define your terms. So when I use a term, I usually try and explain what I'm talking about, because I know other people may be thinking something different. And so I have learned that most people will not support you when you're telling them the truth. That's why in the Bible, in the story of Jesus in the Bible, the Apostle Paul wrote, Am I to become your enemy because I tell you the truth? There's always been a problem in theology and religion. If you know something you're not supposed to know, people don't want to hear you. They don't want to hear it. They don't want to face the truth. <clears throat> mm. And so that's what I try and do is just help people to wake up and learn how much they don't know. Because I want to give back to the human family what I've been given. Yeah, and of course, what we said before the show, um, we <coughs> would also call a cognitive dissonance, um, yeah. that you just don't want the truth. Right, J Jordan, we have loads of questions that, to, uh, that has come in. Um, obviously, we, we knew this would happen. So we're going to go over to the questions just a little bit earlier um, than normal, okay. just to throw over the questions to you so we can get as many questions in in the time that we have. So, Steve, do you want to take the, the two here that's on this first? Yeah, absolutely. And, and then we've had two questions that emailed in to us uh, before the show uh, during the week. So we're going to start off with them two, and then we'll crack on with the, the questions in the chat room. Steve. Okay. Sounds good. Okay. Yeah. Jordan, here we go. First question. Uh, could you please ask Jordan what the one symbol is that is used worldwide? Yeah, the most incredibly important symbol that has ever been developed in the human mind that has been around since mankind has been on the earth. It's an extremely, extremely important symbol, and that is something you see every day, everywhere, and you never thought about it. It's the sun. The sun has been used in every facet of human life. The military uses it on their badges. The police department uses it. The, the educational institutions, colleges, university, government buildings, all kinds of businesses and, and institutions around the world in every country uses the sun as a symbol. And there are a lot of companies that go with the name sun. And so I think that's the most important symbol ever developed was the sun. 
And then, of course, we know that there's another symbol that's been used for thousands of years, many thousands of years. There's a cross. The cross of Christianity has been used for many thousands of years before Christianity. The cross has been used by many, many ancient cultures of the world. So the sun and the cross are two very important symbols that have been used for countless thousands of years. And today the sun symbol is so important to the human race because most people don't know why. <clears throat> it's everywhere, but why? And what is the implication of using the sun? So we can talk about that later if you wish to also. But I would say the sun and the cross are two important symbols. Okay, we'll see if we can get back to that. We just have to, we try and get through the questions uh, first. Steve, next one. Yeah, that's actually very interesting yeah. in relation to the sun. That's why we do our show on Sunday. Yeah. Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> or Horace, I think, is also what the, the sun is, is known as. Anyway, question two, uh, Jordan. How do we change things? What do we have to do to make this world a better place? Well, I, I'm thinking in terms of how we humans can change things. I don't think we can. I don't think we are able to change anything. We don't have the power to do that. We, we as humans don't have the power to change anything. And the reason why is because knowledge is power. Knowledge is power. Once you have knowledge, now you can do things. Now you can change. But if you don't know what's going on, you haven't got the faintest idea because you've never learned <clears throat> how things work, then you really can't change anything. I mean, you can own a Rolls Royce and be on a major highway. But if it breaks down, you don't know how to fix it, so you're just going to sit there because you don't know how to fix anything. It's knowledge that has, gives you power. And that's why I want to continue to promote the idea of getting knowledge about how your world works. So if you're ever suspecting that you could probably do something to help the world, you're not going to do it unless you are highly educated. You need to realize and understand how the world really works and what you need to do about it. <clears throat> so I believe people are waking up around the world realizing that there's something wrong on the earth and it very well might be something very scary and very frightening to people. But you better wake up and understand you, don't, you are not in charge of anything. The world is a very big and powerful place that we live in. And there are other people who are far, far wiser than we are, who run our governments, who run the banks, who run business, and the whole world is lying in the power of the dark principles of the whole world is lying in the power of the devil. That's what the word, that's what the Bible says. Okay, Jordan, what, what what percentage of the the population of the world would need to be? Uh, awake to a certain level for us to uh, effect change uh, and, well, and, and, and what percentage do you reckon are currently awake? I think you know two to three percent of the world were to wake up it would change the whole entire humanity because in the in the beginning of the, of the uh, uh, what I call the American Revolution there was only about 2% of the male population that were here in North America that rose up and took up arms against the tyranny of the European monarchies and founded the United States of America. Only 2%, 98%, it was, it was estimated 98% of the male population in this country and in the states only took up arms so that they were 98% didn't do anything. Albert Einstein said that the world is a very dangerous place, not because bad people do bad things, but because good people do nothing. And so that's what I believe is only about 2% were to wake up. The rest of the world would hear it and learn and do something about it. 
<clears throat> but we only have a small, tiny percent of people who really care and who really want to know. And then you've got 7 billion people on the earth who don't know they're even alive. They don't care. They don't understand. They don't know. As long as they got food in their belly and they got cold beer and the television and entertainment, the ball games, they don't care about the future. They didn't even know. They don't even know there is a future. They don't know where they've come from. They have no idea where they are now, and they couldn't care less. So until you wake up and start educating yourself to the world you live in, I don't think we humans can change anything. I'm very sad to hear that because it, it kind of sounds to me like it's good, <coughs> good night, Irene, for a lot of people. I, I would have thought in my ignorance that there would have been a, a, more, a, a larger percentage of people awake. Uh, if, if someone had said to me, what do you think? Uh, I would have probably said maybe 10, 15% at, at a guess. Now, obviously, I have no way of knowing, but, I mean, if you reckon it's uh, 2% two, two could affect change, but we're obviously nowhere near 2%. So, I mean, I know people people like your good self and other people who are kind of on the scene who have been trying to affect change and wake people up to educate people uh, so that collectively we can make a change. And I, I know people have been doing it for quite a long time, and... Do you? I mean, what what do you see for the future? Do you do you think we will see change in in your lifetime, in our lifetime, or uh, is it just wishful thinking? <clears throat> well, we're seeing change all the time. I think the key to the understanding has to be that you, for the first time, you as the as the public around the world, need to wake up to the overwhelmingly obvious fact that the people who are in power are there because they love political power. They want to be special. They want to have control over you. They want to have control over situations. They, they love the power. Most people, good people, who are not criminally minded, they are only interested in themselves and their families. They just want to live their life and raise their children and love and, and, and have friends and just live their life. They're not interested in having political power over other people to force other people to do what they don't, what they want them to do. But there are, there are a lot of people in the world who are power hungry. They want to control other people. And they are psychotic, mentally deranged. And this is what we find in government today around the world. The people who rise to the top in this world in politics, religion, government, and in, uh, in positions of authority are usually psychotic criminals. They want the power. They will do anything to get in the position to be able to do what they want to do and force you to do what they want you to do. And so you just have to understand that's the way the world is. The people in power are usually ignorant, ill-informed, dim-witted, and stupid, a bunch of alcoholics and they're on drugs, but they want the power. Most good people are not interested in ruling their, own, their fellow man. They just want to be left alone to live their lives. And so that's the problem. We have to realize that the people who are in power are not who you think they are. They're not the wonderful, fine people who are leading you and leading your government. No, they're a bunch of criminals, period. The end of the, end of, the, end of the sentence is they are criminal and they're thinking. They don't care about you. They've never cared about you. They care about themselves and their own power and their money and their way of living. And they want to force that on you. And so I, I see and I understand that the United States is a very powerful country. Not because the people are wonderful. It's because the government is a very extremely violent, powerful government. And, and they will do things around the world to force people to do what they want them to do. And America today, as it was founded, America was founded to be 
the Roman Empire, the new empire of Rome. America is the Roman Empire. It was founded that way, to be the new Roman Empire. And we are today, if you go back in history and read the way Rome ruled the world, that's the way we do it in America, the same way they did it in Rome. And if you go back and look at the history of the European people, Europe has, well, I should say Europe has been around for thousands of years, and they have been controlling the world from Europe. All the different European countries have dominated the planet. And there has been one, uh, one power that has dominated Europe, and that is Rome. Rome dominated Europe, and Europe dominates the world. And so, therefore, we say all roads lead to Rome. And that's exactly what's happening. All roads lead to Rome. The road of, of illicit narcotics, buying and selling of drugs, that's Roman. That goes back to the Mafia. La Cosa Nostra, out of Italy. The uh, Roman Senate, the Roman, uh, in America we have a Senate, like Rome had a Senate, and the history book said that we are uh, like the Roman Empire because Caesar, the, the reference works say that Caesar, every morning in Rome, he would go up on the hill because the government of the Roman Empire was up on a hill. It was called Capitol Hill. Well, we have a Capitol Hill today, too, in America. We have a Capitol Hill, and Caesar is God. You know, he, present, he presents himself as God, uh, which is not including, I'm not including uh, President Trump. Trump is kind of a different kind of person. But all the others have been presenting themselves as gods, like all these incredibly criminal, violent, dirty people who, you know, like Obama, who considered, he considered himself to be the absolute incarnation of the most high God on the earth. And everybody crawled on their knees to worship Obama because he was God incarnate. Well, then we find out it wasn't God incarnate. No, he was just a communist, Marxist, Leninist, communist, trying to overthrow the American system. <clears throat> so... I think it's important for people to realize that their national leaders and their educational and religious leaders are all lying criminals. Exactly. And that's that's what we say here in Ireland. What's going on over here? The, the, it's a cesspit of corruption at the moment. Yeah. It's worldwide, and Ireland's no different. We have the same thing over here, and it's just criminal what's going on and what's happening to the people. But, you know, hopefully with the you know, people waking up and the changes taking place globally, that will uh, be sorted uh, in the near future. We have more questions for you there, Jordan. Uh, over to you, Steve. Yeah, I know <laughs> you say it's criminal what's happening, uh, what the government's are doing. It's criminal that the people are letting it happen as well, because there are some people... The I'm all right, Jacks. Uh, you know, not in my backyard. And if it doesn't affect them, then they're not quite interested. In and that's uh, that, that's something that you, you you touched on there just uh, moments <laughs> ago, Jordan. You were kind of saying there there are people who they're good people. They just want to kind of get through this life and uh, do what needs to be done and look after their children and live in love. And they don't really bother with too much. And 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 it's those people. I mean, if those people. If, if we can't wake them up because they don't want to be woken up, they just want to get to the end of this journey that that they're on, uh, in love, yeah. in love, but without kind of rocking the boat, as I say, does that make them bad people? No, but there will not. But when the end comes, there will be no innocent bystanders. I do not believe in the idea of innocent bystanders uh, because you are guilty of going along to get along. You have accepted the governmental systems. You've accepted the religious beliefs. You've accepted the way operation on the earth happens. You have accepted it. You go along with it. And so don't say that you were innocent. You were mistrust. You, you were misled. You were not innocent. 
because you've got a mind of your own if you just use it instead of drinking your beer and watching ball games. If you just think for a moment and educate yourself and go to a library. Today you have the, uh, the, the web. You can go on the web and read and study and go to YouTube and listen to lectures. You can listen to important people. You can learn how the world works. But most people don't take advantage of that. They're not interested. That they only want to hear about the football game or the basketball game or or the latest movie to entertain yeah. them. They're not, not interested to hear how the world really works. Well, then if it takes advantage of you and you end up in court and you have to go to jail or you get ripped off and stolen and people rip you off and leave you for dead, <clears throat> well, you should wake up and learn how the world works. And that's what I'm trying to do. And I'm telling you, there's a whole entire world of knowledge that people are not aware of. They've never been told. I've heard, of, I've known about it for many years, <clears throat> and you would be shocked to know how much incredible criminality is going on on the earth today that people do not see at all. They don't hear it. They don't see it. They don't know anything about it. But it's incredibly bad in front of you, right in your face, and you don't see it. And, and my particular take on it is that I think religion is the problem. One of the biggest problems we face in the world today is the ignorance of theology and religion. We, I believe that the religion should be a science. But in point of fact, what we have is science is a religion. Is supposed to be the other way. Yeah. I would think religion should be a science. <clears throat> but science is a religion. Today they have their holy books, they have their holy saints, and, and, they, and they would pontificate. The, the scientists will tell you things that this is the way it is, and this is how we, this is science has found out that this is this is, is this and that, and they will tell you all about the, what they know. <clears throat> and then 10 years from the day, you will find out that they didn't know anything. It's all different. Every 10 years, it's, everything is all different than what we thought before. Why? Because we're learning more. We now know how much we don't know. And so I think the worst part is that as religion and the people's knowledge of how the world works in power, how power works, it's filled with lies and deception. I, th I think with the help of the internet, Jordan, <coughs> it's made a big advance in educating people because we could share information and we didn't have to rely on the lamestream media with all their fake news and propaganda. And the internet, right. it, the internet mm -hmm. was a catalyst that helped so many people. I know they did, they did want to use it as a, a propaganda mechanism to, to, again, fool people into uh, you know, their plans and their ideas. Uh, and again, take away the people's freedoms, but the internet was used to educate people, and that's kind of really um, backfired on them uh, uh, in a big way. But we have more questions for you there, um, Steve. Yes, we do. So, so many questions. People are already looking for a part two, three, and a part four because <laughs> there's so, so much information, so much to get through. Uh, but Jordan, Shane is wondering, uh, can you ask Jordan what the name of the church in Rome, what's the name of the church in Rome where the crosses are upside down and only the Pope can say Mass there? He says he thinks it's something like a black church or something. I've never heard of that. Is that something you can, you can talk about? Uh... I don't know the name of the church. I know what they're talking about. I don't recall the name of that church, no. But I do think that one of the most important churches in all of Italy is the Church of Gesù, G as in God, G-E-S-U, the Church of Gesù. The Church of Gesù is in Rome, it is the home office of the Jesuits. The Jesuits have their own church. It's called the Church of Jesu. And it is very, very interesting, the stuff that's going on in that church, which is the home church for the Jesuit order. 
The Jesuits, I believe, are at the bottom of all of the stuff going on in the world today. That's what I believe. I am totally convinced in my mind that the Jesuits are behind the wars, the violence, the revolutions, the drug running, pornography, drugs, alcoholism. They are promoting all of the darkest stuff in the history of the world. And they're doing it for a reason. And it makes sense once you see who they are and what they're doing and how they're connected themselves to the Catholic Church and who they, who the Jesuits are. And, of course, today the Pope himself is a Jesuit. <clears throat> so you really need to understand who the Jesuits are and how they control your country and all the dark stuff that's going on in your world, how they are the people behind it. There's a reason why they operate the way they do and operate in total secret so that you will not know anything. And they will control you by their drug running, by the wars, by the violence, the businesses, the military industrial complex. Jesuits are, are, are operating all over the world in a way that you have no idea in the world. And now they finally have a Jesuit to be Pope. They don't sound like a nice bunch of people, to be totally honest. Are they human? <coughs> Say that again. I said, I'm just saying that the Jesuits, they don't sound like a, nice, a very nice bunch of people. I'm just wondering, are they actually human? Uh, that I don't know. I, uh, that's, that's a very good question because I'm not really sure. <coughs> if, if they are human, they are the brain works behind. They are the people who set the stage for the mafia. When you think of the underworld organizations of organized crime in Italy, the mob, the mafia, uh, watch the movies about the mafia, you begin to see who they are and how this underworld criminal organization, organized crime, works a very violent, extremely, uh, extremely violent and crazy, the stuff they can do. And I am totally sure that there's Jesuits involved in the underworld around the earth. And they are the brains behind it. And the reason why is because of the symbols which are used, the words, the terms, and the symbols. And that's something I've been looking at for some 60 years, is the symbolism in world government, world religion, and world finance. <clears throat> world education, there are really big tad tail signs. Once you begin to see the signs, it's called pattern recognition. You begin to see certain signs that were, uh, you know, four or five hundred years old, a thousand years old, and you know what they meant back then, and now you're seeing them today, still. And so you need to, you know, you need to study the history of the world and how we got to be where we are today, and then you will finally see who's running our world today and why. <clears throat> so that's what I do. That's what I try and do, and I try and help other people who want to know. Brilliant. It's a mammoth task, that is. Jordan, we do have a lot of questions, so we're going to quick fire them over to you. We try and get through them. And I know some questions might take a long time to answer, but if we can do a condensed answer, we can try and help our listeners, and we'll try and get through as many as we can. Uh, Steve? Okay, yeah, a lot of questions. Gonna, we're going to jump around a little bit here. Um, Chris, Chris asked earlier, um, Jordan, um, do you know what's going on in Antarctica? Any any news on on just exactly what the hell's going on down there? Well, actually, no, I don't. But I have heard stories from people who do, <clears throat> and there's obviously something going on because too many important people are showing concern. They're going down there and they're very concerned. <clears throat> Military, churches, religious. Uh, figures, a lot of people, the astronauts. So there must be something going on down there that they haven't told us. The one man that I love to hear talk about those kind of subjects is, in my opinion, one of the most brilliant men that I've ever heard. Uh, his name is Joseph Farrell. 
F-A-R-R-E-L-L, Joseph Farrell. If you go on the web and, and listen to Joseph Farrell's lectures on radio, he is very well informed about the stuff that's going on behind the scenes in Antarctica and the Nazi Party, the Communist Party, a world revolution, an extremely interesting man. And another man who's uh, very interesting about that subject of what's going on in Antarctica is Peter Lavenda, L-E-V-E-N-D-A. Peter Lavenda is an extraordinarily brilliant man. And I love listening to both Peter Lavenda and Joseph Farrell because they are well informed and they are very highly and articulate and very easy to listen to and understand, but they're telling you exactly what's happening down there. And so I know there's something going on, and I suspect it has to do with extraterrestrial knowledge. Something's been found down there that, uh, that is scaring the people in power around the world, people who are very powerful people, industrialists, military, religious people who are very powerful people in this world. They are, they are, been, they are being scared and frightened, and they're going down there to look and see what they have found. So I'm sure there's something otherworldly going on down there. It's just that I don't know. I haven't been there myself. But I am listening to Peter Lavenda and Joseph Farrell. They they are the ones that are really well informed. So okay, we have second. yeah we have those names and we pop them on the chat room, and I uh, suggest that people do check them out as well. Um, yeah, it'll be interesting to see what they've actually what they've actually got down there and uh, what exactly it's uh, capable of doing. Uh, what about the moon? Uh, uh, Jordan, the, a lot of people speculate that on the dark side of the moon that, uh, well, A, it's hollow, uh, it's an artificial light, and B, that there's a, a, a moon base up there. What, what's your thoughts on that? And can, I yeah. just, can I just add to that, that it c apparently, recently, NASA, well, we, we never believe NASA, but NASA have said that the moon is an Earth's atmosphere. This is the latest thing that's come out. Oh. Well, I have also been aware that I believe the moon is hollow. I believe it has a metal superstructure and it's hollow. It was designed and brought here. I think the moon was actually brought here to a long time ago. It was designed perfectly, the exact size it's supposed to be. I have heard scientists who know, they say that the moon is far too big of a of a, uh, of a heavenly body to be connected to the earth. The moon is too big of a satellite for the Earth, but why is it the size it is? Because on the on the uh, solar eclipse, the moon is exactly the same size in the sky as the sun. How is that possible? And so there's a reason why I think that the moon was developed and built and brought here purposely. And it's hollow, and it has a superstructure of metal. And uh, that's not only, that's, that is very interesting, but I also think that there's something going on right now on the planet of, uh, planet of Saturn. Saturn is very important to what's happening today in the world. And I have talked with uh, people and scientists who work with NASA tell me about the planet Saturn. And they're telling me, and they're showing me pictures that Saturn is inhabited. We know there is some, something is there, is, uh, some kind of a life form is there in the planet Saturn. And I don't mean on Saturn, I mean in it. Because they've got pictures of, of vehicles going into the planet Saturn and coming out of the planet Saturn. So somebody is up there on the planet Saturn, and we know they're there, and we're suspecting that they're probably getting ready to do something with the Earth. It looks like they may be getting ready to do something with us <clears throat> on the Earth, and that's why we have Star Wars. That's why we have the space stations and all the military stuff in, in space is not because we're, we're worrying about Russia. It's because we got it in space because we're concerned about who is on the planet Saturn, 
who is on the moon and who are they, but we know they're out there because we see them and we know they're watching us and there very well might be a time when they're going to move in on us and we've got to be ready for them. And so that's why I've heard from military and astronauts that, the, that there is life out there and they are on the planet Saturn. They're on the planet of the, of the moon. And there very well might be some kind of a military move against us by whoever they are out there. Very interesting stuff, I think. Oh, very interesting. Well, I mean, if there's going to be a military movement against against the inhabitants of, of uh, Earth where we live, I mean, obviously, we're, we're not prepared for that. I mean, surely whoever they are... You might uh, assume we're not prepared well, for it. I, I assu- I mean, well, that's my assumption. I mean, I would assume, but then I, I don't know, because like we say, we don't know what's going on down in Antarctica. But, I mean, is there, there is, is some speculation. Um, as Dougie said on the chat there, that he reckons that what they found in Antarctica is um, a, a previous race, the relics from a previous race. Now, maybe it is, maybe it isn't, I don't know. But, I mean, if... Uh, Which goes against their dogma. It, if it goes it against the dogma and what we've been told throughout history, and it contradicts it, then they're concerned because all the brainwashing will be exposed, and we'll know that we've been we've been taught a lot of lies. Only if it's if what they have found, if, if it is what we what we yeah. suggest <coughs> it might be, if it's actually released to the public. If it's not, then sure, we'll we'll just be kept in the dark. Mm. Well, just keep in mind that propaganda does not deceive you. It helps you to deceive yourself. You believe it. So deceiving, it doesn't deceive you. You deceive yourself by listening to it. Yeah. And so the most important story I think about the extraterrestrial presence of what's going on in the world today has to do with the Bible's account, the biblical account of how life started. Because what you read in Genesis 1, the first chapter of Genesis is totally misunderstood. But when you see what the words really mean, what the original text was saying, it, has, it bears no resemblance to the way people understand God in religion today. If you go back and read Genesis 1, 1, and, and the second chapter and the third chapter, probably up to about the ninth or tenth chapter, the first ten chapters of Genesis are telling you a story that you will not believe when you finally see what it's actually saying. Because we've never been told the real truth about what Genesis, the first ten chapters, are actually saying. And, and the church has purposely deceived the people and given them a story which has no basis in fact at all. But if you go back and look at the story in Genesis 1, the first chapter, it will blow your mind when you see what the words really mean and what it was actually saying. And then you will see how much you have not known about God in religion and where man comes from. I talked with a very high-ranking rabbi back in 1960, many years ago. He was an extraordinarily brilliant man who had written many books about theology, and I contacted him. He was living in America at the time. He went on to go into Israel and be on the governing body of Israel. But when I was talking to him, he told me, he said, nowhere in the Old Testament, what you call the Old Testament, nowhere in the Old Testament does it say God made man. There's no place that says that. There is no place that God made man. Because in the Old Testament, God did not make man. And, and I said, well, I don't understand. He said, well, you, the Christians believe that it says uh, that Adam and Eve were created by God. It doesn't say that Adam and Eve were, it says Adam was created, not man. So, in order to understand what I'm saying, you need to go back to Genesis 1-1, the very first chapter and the very first words in the first chapter. In Genesis 1-1, in the King James Bible, it says, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. But that's not what it says in Hebrew. It doesn't say that. 
You go back and read it. It doesn't say that because God in Hebrew is El. E-L is the word for God in the what we call the Hebrew language. And so you, if you go back and read it in the Bible, the Old Testament, you would expect to read in the Old Testament in Hebrew, in the beginning, El created the heavens and the earth. But it doesn't say that. It doesn't say El created. It says in the beginning, in Hebrew, in the beginning, the Elohim created the heavens and the earth. What is the difference between El and Elohim? Well, it's a world of difference. Elohim is a plural on the end of a word. So in English, if you have a car, C-A-R, you add an S on the end and it makes it cars, more than one, a plural. So in Hebrew, if you add El, Lohim, Lohim to the word El, it means God in the plural, many gods. So the correct translation should have been in the King James, in the beginning the gods created the heavens and the earth, not God. <clears throat> then when you go to the, uh, the Genesis 128 where it says, And God said, Come, let us make man in our image after our likeness. The Christians will say, there it is. There's the scripture that says God is making man. No, the rabbi said, no, it does not mean that. You're misinterpreting. Go back and read it correctly. It says, come, let us make Adam, not man. Man in Hebrew is ish. I-S-H is man in Hebrew. Or men, it can be uh, singular or plural, but I-S-H is men. But it doesn't say in the scriptures in Hebrew in 128, God said, come let us make ish. No, it doesn't say ish. It says, come let us make Adam, not Adam, Adam, A-D-M. So when you realize that it says Adam, it means a different kind of, of creature, a different kind of, of, of human. And so it doesn't say God created Ish. Ish. Ish was already here. Ish was already here. And so the correct understanding of 128, go back and read it correctly. It says, come, let us make Adam in our image, after our likeness. Come, let us make this creature in our image after our likeness. It's not ish. It's Adam. Okay, where, uh, where, where does the Nephilim fit in in the book of Genesis? Well, that's what, that's what we're going, that's what we're heading for. Okay. Because Adam is a different kind of creature. And so what the Bible is saying in Genesis one twenty eight, the gods, more than one, the Elohim, the gods came here, from where? From out there. I ask any eight-year-old where God is. He'll point out there in space. He's out there in heaven. Right. Well, if he's out there, that means he's extraterrestrial. He's not from here. And so if his God's out there, he's out there. And he's extraterrestrial. And God came here. The one what we call the gods, they came here. And there was already people on the earth that were called... Neanderthal, the cro magnon man, all of these creatures that we look at today, we know that they exist, that we have the skeletal remains. And they look like animals. They look like they walk upright, but they were hairy and lived like animals. And we, we uh, associate them with monkeys and with chimpanzees. No, they were Neanderthal. They had the brains of a monkey. And today we've got a lot of people, men on the earth who are like Neanderthals. They, they, they act like a bunch of monkeys, but they're not. They are Adam. Adam is remaking the creatures that were here. So what I'm saying is that God, or the gods in the plural, came here from out of space. They came here and they looked at what was already here. What was already here was Ish. Ish was man. And so we have the Cro-Magnon man, the Peking man, the Neanderthal man, 
So that's man was already here. But when the gods came here, they took a one look at them people that were here and said, come, let us make man in our image after our likeness. Let's make him to look like us. And that means let's let's take one of the females and procreate with her. Let's put our DNA in one of these females and see what she gives birth to, just just for the hell of it. Let's just put our DNA in her and let's see what she gives birth to. So they put DNA into one of the females and they and they, they put a special place on earth that they surrounded it so nobody, none of the other animals and none of the other ish could come in and disturb anything. So they put the female and a male in an area we call the Garden of Eden. The Garden of Eden was simply a small area on the earth that was being protected for this experiment. And so the gods, more than one, came here and they saw the ish man, whatever he was, a Peking man, the Deanderthal man, whatever these ancient creatures were, they walked upright like us, they would, they looked like us, but they were hairy and mostly looked like what we would refer to as cavemen. And so the God says, come, let us make man like us, to look like us, in our image and after our likeness. And so therefore, the God's took one of the females, put her in a safe place, and procreated with her and changed our DNA. And so we come from the, the, the end of the man, but we are a lot different than what those old cavemen kind of creatures. We call them in science the hominids. The hominid creatures were what we think of as the ancient cavemen. And so today we're different. We don't live in caves. We couldn't, we wouldn't exist in a cave. Our, our skin is too thin that we couldn't live in the, in the terrible cold. And we, and we, you know, we don't live like these cavemen. We live a different kind of life. And there's so, therefore, half of us is spiritual and the other half is physical. And it's because we are the Adam, not A-D-A-M, Adam. No, uh, go back and read it in Hebrew. Adam, A-D-M only. Just A-D-M. A-D-M simply means a different kind of creature. And so, therefore, the gods came here. They saw the Ish, the, in, the ancient man, and they said, Come, let us make him look like us. So he will be like us, and he will look like us, and be like us. Well, that's scary if you think about it, because <clears throat> later on we read in Genesis 18, the 18th chapter, where Abraham and his wife were in the tent, and it says Abraham saw three men, three men come walking into the camp, and they come walking up to his tent. And it says Abraham went out and bowed down, uh, his face on the ground, bowed down, and said, What is my Lord saying to his servant? So we're told there that Abraham realized that these three men were the gods. They were the creators of mankind. And he bows down and says, What is my God, what is my Lord saying to his servant? And the three men said that they were on their way to do some business and they were passing through. And Abraham said, no, let me fix you something to eat first. And so we're told in Genesis 18 that, uh, that Abraham's wife fixed dinner for the three men. And they were, they were handsome men. But then later on, two of the men got up and went on their way. But the one man stayed and talked with him. And the Bible says that Abraham was talking to the Almighty God. But he was a man having lunch with, with Abraham, sitting under a tree, sitting and talking. And so he was the man who created us. So we are created in the image and the likeness of the gods who came here from another world a long time ago and recreated us. We were ish until they came here. Then they recreated us and made us into Adam. Okay, that's a, it's interesting because... I came across a chap called Claude Royal, which is a French racing driver, and he had a, a, an ET experience in the 70s. 
And he wrote a book, um, and I can't think of the name of the book at the moment. Um, the, I think it's called The Face of God or something like that. But the uh, Raelia movement was O-A-E-L dot O-R-G is, uh -huh. is the website. And he talks about going into the craft with ETs, and he talks about the Elohim, and he talks about them coming down, and different groups of the Elohim um, experimenting with genetics on the Neanderthals that were on the planet at the moment. Well, that's what the Bible says in yeah. Genesis 1. Yeah. Okay. Well, listen, um, uh, Jordan, we have reached that time, unfortunately, and it's been fantastic information, and I know we could go on for another two or three hours, um, but it's brilliant information, and hopefully there'll, there'll be another two, a part two in the bag um, that uh, we'd like to do with you, and then you know continue on um, where we left off. But um, for now, we'd just like to say a big thank you for coming on to the show. Now, we're going to get all your contact details, but I know you want to tell us about um, your website and stuff like that, so I'm passing it over to Steve, and Steve can get all that off you. Okay, I just want to say very quickly, Jordan, before we hand the mic over to you, um, thank you so much for giving us your time today, this evening. Uh, it's been great information, a lot a lot of questions. There's so many questions and so little time. A lot of the questions that we didn't get to ask, I have posted them over to you in the Skype for your consideration. If at some point, if, if you maybe have a, a, a couple of moments, if you fancy just maybe just jotting a couple of answers, if you can, um, then we, we can read them out to our listeners. Or failing that, uh, definitely a part two if you're up for a part to we would definitely love to have you on again because so much information here anyway as alan said we do know you want to give out the, the your website details and we do have them uh, already logged here and posted up on the chat room uh, so just uh, closing words to you jordan well what i would say is that uh, there are different websites out on the web with my name on them but they don't belong to me other people are using my name to promote themselves and to promote ideas and things that has, not, has nothing to do with me. My name is Jordan, like the River Jordan Maxwell. And my website is Jordan Maxwell Show. So if you're interested in contacting me, always add the word show, S-H-O-W, because that's my website, Jordan Maxwell Show. Nothing else is mine. Any other websites out there with my name on it has nothing to do with me. And when you go on my website, Jordan Maxwell Show, you will see another website on my home page called Jordan Maxwell Research Society. It's just a website which I have had to put up where I am uploading all of my information, the pictures, the documents, the audio, video, all of the research material, all the research stuff I've been doing over the years, little by little on all kinds of subjects. I have a research website. You have to go on that Jordan Maxwell Show, which is my website, and you will see a little banner, a little button that says Jordan, join Jordan Maxwell's Research Society. And so it costs you a small donation for a lifetime, a one-time, one-time small donation for a lifetime of my all my work is being collected and put in one place. And you can sit and read and study stuff that you've never heard before and see pictures and diagrams about all the lies and deception in the world and where it comes from and what's going on and listen to the audio and videos, all kinds of interesting stuff on my website. So go on Jordan Maxwell's show and join my research society and you'll see it all with your own eyes. And you can hear it all. And I've got all kinds of information on that website. And I want to thank you for letting me tell the people that. But remember, it's Jordan Maxwell's show. Nothing else but that. Now, that's brilliant. Uh, Jordan, thanks again for coming on. Uh, you're a star with all the work that you've done. And long may you continue in the next another 10, 20 years, hopefully, fingers crossed. Um, but good luck with all the work that you're doing and I'm sure we'll be in touch in the future thanks again, just stay with us there for a minute Jordan, we're going off to a musical break this is Open Your Mind Radio on OYMRadio.com and People's Internet Radio.com oh, <laughs> we're back yeah, Alan was just telling me about that song so yeah, tell us a little bit about it 
It's uh, Bob Marley's 70th birthday, and that was an a cappella version of th- that song, Could You Be Love? No um, musical instruments. No musical instruments. That's purely a cappella. That's amazing. Yeah, if you go onto YouTube and type in Bob Marley's 70th birthday a cappella, could this, could, could this Be Love? Um, then you will uh, actually see it on YouTube. And it's very interesting. You see them all singing and making the sounds and everything else. Um, very catchy. Um, I thought that was a... A good tune to put on there. I know people are saying, hey, why don't you play Michael Jackson? Well, we would do. Maybe next week we'll put on Michael Jackson. I believe Michael Jackson would pull, if, if, we're to, if anything that we hear is to be believed, like he's been pulled from the playlist on the national broadcaster here in uh, Ireland. Yeah, well, I'm not going to buy into all that BS that they're doing no. with Michael Jackson. You know, at the end of the day, um, fantastic musician, fantastic music. Um, whatever his personal preferences were, what was going on, I'm just interested in the music and uh, superb music. Um, uh, I don't believe that was. I believe they set him up anyway. Um, that's my own, my own opinion. Unless I see really good evidence, uh, independent evidence that says otherwise. Um, even my own partner, who said she's seen the program, said that she was doubtful of the people that were interviewed saying one minute and that he didn't do anything, and the next minute they're in the spotlight, you know. Yeah, um, yeah. And uh, she didn't get a good feeling over, you know, the, these people being interviewed all of a sudden, you know. And of course, a dead man, a dead man can't defend himself, can he? That's the truth. Yeah, it was, it was actually watched in, in my household as well. I didn't partake because it doesn't really interest me. Um, you know, for the same reason. And I mean, if 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 you look up online, I don't know if it's there now, but there was a, a gentleman who uh, put out some information many years ago, and I can't think of his name. But if you look at, just look up on the internet, uh, Michael Jackson's last phone call. Yeah, you should find a video clip, uh, unless it's been removed. But it it is a short clip of allegedly of Michael Jackson, on, and he is talking to. Um, this is supposed to be the night before he died, actually, and he's supposed to be talking to. Um, a guy on the phone called Dieter, Dieter, and he kind of spills the beans, he said that they are, he said, people are trying to kill me, like, you know, I don't even feel safe, he says, I know that they want to take me out, and they're trying to uh, plot things against me. Exactly, so um doesn't surprise me there. Now, I did mention when uh, Jordan was on about Claude Royale, and I'm just on the, uh, the Claude Royale, uh, the website there, royale.org, now I'm not promoting this in any way, by the way, but I'm just saying that the coincidence that uh, Jordan said about Elohim and what Claude Royale said was thousands of years ago scientists from another planet came to earth and created all forms of life including human beings whom they created in their own image. References to these scientists and their work can be, fa- and their work can be found in the ancient texts of many cultures. Due to their highly advanced technology, they were considered as gods by our primitive ancestors and often referred to as Elohim, which in ancient Hebrew meant those who came from the sky. So it's interesting that Jordan actually talked about that and Claude Royale talks about that. Now I will say I do have his book, Claude Royale's book, and I did read it and I found it very interesting. Um, now the Raelian movement we did have on Deg uh, Garrity Garrity a few years ago who was um, once upon a time the Irish uh, spokesman for the Raelian movement but he left uh, the Raelian movement um, but they're still going as far as I know and he said there were certain things going on that he wasn't happy about that's why he left so I'm not uh, promoting the Raelian movement in any way my, me, Steve, or OIM, for that matter. But it's just interesting, the story he said, that he went into the forest in the 70s, came across an ET craft, got on it, and they started educating him about life and the history of man and everything else. And it just kind of matches what Jordan was talking about. So that's quite interesting. Um, so, yeah, so, you know, check out the website and have a look at it, by all means. It's org is the uh, is the website there if you want to get a bit of a history behind it. Um, now, also, uh, what I came across during the week, funny enough, was, uh, you know the BBC and the whole idea of them covering up pedophilia and all that kind of stuff, and apparently Jeremy Clarkson from the Top Gear uh, TV programme, or ex-Top Gear TV programme, um, he tweeted 
uh, and this was his tweet apparently, he said, if only I abused a child rather than a producer, the BBC would have covered it up. That's the, isn't that the truth? That, isn't, that, yeah. <laughs> isn't that the truth? So he, he, he gives the producer um, a bit of hassle and he gets kicked off Top Gear, but if he was abusing a kid, they'd be all covered up by the BBC. Um, and that's an interesting uh, tweet, you know, so close to the mark. Very well, very close to the mark. Right, are you going to tell us about Richard? Yes, I am going to tell you. Tell us all about Richard. Uh, and it is Richard Cumbers. And. <laughs> I've lost See, a piece of happens. paper. The unscripted script is all Where over the place. Is the piece of paper? I have that's uh, it there. Oh, that's it there. Sorry, I do apologise. <laughs> Live radio. Uh, Richard Cumbers of Pain Genie Energy Medicine is going to be running a course at the Birmingham Buddhist Centre. That's going to be in April and May. Listeners can look uh, up the website, which is www21 uh, 21 st century or sorry 21st century energy and that is the number two the number one so it's two one twenty one st century uh, energy medicine.com and under the skin air training tab you can get more information in relation to a discount for oim listeners uh, anyone who buys a pain genie would also get free access to the new tab in the paid members only subscription which will cover most types of chronic and uh, degenerative disease and uh, I just want to say in relation to the pain genie uh, mine was well it's, I won't say it was taken out of retirement it's n- it never really retires it just sits on the shelf waiting for when it's required and then um, anyone who was here at the beginning of the show will remember I did mention about waking up uh, with a sore back uh, kind of every morning really so it was pretty bad on Saturday, so I uh, stuck the pain genie on, put it onto the, onto the the, the, the required mode uh, for the pain, and left it on. Went about my business, and I have to say, within maybe an hour, an hour to an hour and a half, uh, I, I I took it off because it was no longer required. I was brand new, I have to say. Uh, so uh, yeah, it's a, it is a great device. It costs a few quid, but when you think about what you'd be paying for, you know, doctor's bills and also on prescription medication for pain, and this little gizmo kind of, you know, sorts it all out. I have to say, uh, it it works wonders for me, and I'm a great advocate, as I know Alan is as well. We're great advocates of the pain genie, and we're not getting paid to say this. No, this is uh, this is from the heart. This is from the heart, and I have to agree with Steve. I was in the same position that I needed to use the pain genie, but on my foot. And reflexology, you know, if you have any issues with your body, a reflexologist would be able to uh, pick that up with your feet. And I had an issue with my foot, and I took the pain genie out, and I whacked it on there, gave it a bit of treatment over a couple of days, and that's it. It's sorted. It's gone. Finished. Um, so, yeah, I mean, are we endorsing the pain genie? Yeah, of course we are, because we know it, it works. We've used it time and time again on ourselves and our friends and family. Um, and it's worked. Um, now, it's, has it worked 100% of the time? No, because there's some conditions that it won't work on. Um, one lady came to me where she had um, a plate in her back, and the plate was hidden off the nerve in, her, in the back of her, uh, in her back, in her spine. And she, basically, the, the surgeon made the cock up, and you know, uh, she needed another surgery to fix the problem. And I treated her with a pain genie, and although the pain did go down a little bit, you know, really what she needed was maybe the surgery to go and fix that, to get it removed from pinching the, the, the nerve um, on her spine. Um, and uh, But she did, said it helped a little bit, but she really needed the op. So there's some, obviously, conditions that the pain genie won't do. We probably will need an operation. But you know what? Um, I wouldn't say... I mean, I've, we've done the training, and I've treated a number of people with the pain genie. Um, but I wouldn't say I'm anywhere near... The knowledge that I have, uh, that Richard would had, uh, Richard has, with the pain genie, um, because I'm still learning all the time with the pain genie, and I touch base with Richard every now and again. And as we said last week on the show, um, Richard came across a situation personally where he had to use the pain genie as a defibrillator to resuscitate a person, um, and that's it can be used for that. And he carries the pain genie around all the time. Um, obviously we can't go into detail as to what happened but basically he used the pain genie for that uh, we've never touch wood ever had to do that I hope we never ever have to do that but it's good to know that it can be done and um, 
if we need to do that. Now, the guest on the show next week is a lady called Danny McKenney, Danny, Danny Arnold McKenney. Um, she's a researcher. And I actually had a Skype with Danny during the week, and we spoke for about two hours. And basically what happened was, I came across Danny's interview with another lady on YouTube. And Danny was talking about certain things, and the other lady um, kind of, uh, maybe she was at a certain level of awakening, and um, Danny was kind of dropping a few hints, and um, she kind of was saying, oh, that, that's interesting, but she never kind of pursued the information. And I said, well, Danny is kind of aware of what's going on, especially regarding energies and about how they're affecting people on the planet and a, a whole plethora of other things. And she has her own Facebook group and everything else, and she invited me into one of our meetings with uh, a lot of people, which went on apparently for four hours, but I didn't say for four hours. I was too tired, early to bed me. But it was very nice for her to ask uh, her to and for her to ask me to go in <coughs> and uh, and I see our group and our team. Well, I won't say a team, just people that are just talking to each other about everything and anything really. So we've asked Danny to uh, come on the show for next week and just talk to us about everything and anything, um, energies and maybe you know whatever takes our fancy, whatever questions we want to ask. Um, and she's aware of you know she went, she's been down the rabbit hole. She was very honest and upfront uh, with me, and she said, yes, I was involved in promoting the Jasara and the Sarah. I know it's a pile of poo. Um, I, I was involved with the OPPT. That was another rabbit hole that I, I learned my lesson from, and one or two of the lessons that she learned, and she just kind of now, you know, once bitten, twice shy, she's just keeping away from a lot of things and just doing her own thing and goes with the flow and doesn't get caught up in certain things. So it's interesting that she was up straight and uh, and forward. Uh, and she knows about uh, Thomas. She knows about the foundation and Kim as well. We talked about that briefly. Um, so it should be an interesting interview. Um, you know, so that's uh, that's who we have on next week. Um, so anyway, for myself, just looking at the time, Alan James, take it easy. Have a safe week. Have a good week. If you have any information you want to send us in, email us on info.oimradio.com. Um, take care. Have a good night. Bye-bye. Okay, and that just leaves me to say, um, I think I think Barry is up next on People's Internet Radio with the big puzzle. I'm not 100 percent sure. And um, on tomorrow night uh, with the Three's Company, the Three Amigos, uh, Three's Company, Three Amigos, sorry, the Three Amigos Three's Company. Yeah, well, well uh, <laughs> what can I say? Um, anyway, Paul uh, is going to be joining uh, the gang there, Three's Company. I've done it again. The yeah, three amigos. You've got like three amigos. Minash Minash Chuan, <laughs> <and> mind <laughs> or something. You know, that, did you no. tell your wife about this? Uh, no, I oh, didn't. Uh, anyway, uh, the three amigos will be on People's Internet Radio tomorrow night from from uh, nine o'clock onwards. Uh, Paul Cotty will be joining, them and, and they're going to be talking about all the benefits of cannabis products and also other natural remedies. So a show not to be missed. Uh, so there you go right it's 9 o'clock it's time for us to skedaddle out of here and thanks for everyone for joining us this evening both on the chat rooms and also on the live streams as well and um, glad we could be a part of your evening until next week take care bye bye